Hey everyone, it's Bobo. Thanks for tuning in. Um, obviously I'm about to do some work on a handgun. Um, this is not a how-to video because I'm not a gunsmith and I'm not going to try to tell you um, the proper way to go about doing this sort of job. But uh, this is what I did um, first time ever working on um, a handgun. I'm doing work of this nature, actually removing metal from it. But um, Everything turned out well my first attempt, so this is my second attempt. I'm basically just going to show you uh, what I used, what I did, and I'll put up some pictures before and after, and you get to see if this is something that you might want to try yourself, um, as opposed to, you know, trusting your handgun to some unknown gunsmith or, you know, sending it off and spending a lot of money. Basically, this tool uh, was 90 or or $100 from Brownells, and... Um, just go ahead and show you what I did. So basically um, I practiced on this revolver. It's an old Charter Arms I had and um, you might be able to see the reflection in the 45 degree cut in the cylinders. Uh, otherwise, you know, there would not be any light shining there because this is a blued revolver. But you can see, uh, hopefully, the chamfering that was done here. So I practiced on this gun. I'm going to put that away and get the other one out. So just a couple of uh, cylinders left to do. The top ones here were not done. You can see hopefully, and I'll rotate it here, um, there's no angles cut in these top two. I'll rotate it around and you'll be able to see the reflection in the metal in that um, chamfered area. That's all you're doing is just putting a 45 degree angle in that area. Okay, so now we're back to the two that were not done. So what you need, obviously, is the tool. It comes in three pieces. You basically um, you know, screw the handle on, insert this um, guide, you know, so there's a set screw to lock it in. Um, things you need to have on hand, or that I had on hand anyway, is uh, some cutting fluid. Just picked this up at a local hardware store. There's nothing fancy, it's not really meant to be used on, you know, gunsmithing, but it works. You need some spent casings. Now basically we'll put those in. The cylinders that we're not working on, basically this helps to hold the um, extractor in place so it doesn't move as you're um, working on the, the one. You need some um, cotton patches to um, clean the tool off and um, maybe you want to have a t-shirt, you know, in your lap or something to uh, wipe your fingers because, uh, you know, if you're not using gloves, you're going to get oil on your fingers. Okay, so we're ready to go. And um, basically you're just following along while I do this. I'm not really instructing you on how to do it. But um, maybe at the end of this video, you see the results and decide it might be something you might want to try on your own. So, um, just... Uh, one tip before I uh, proceed here with the cutting was the very first cylinder I did, or chamber, um, I cut that to the depth that I wanted for all the ones to follow because uh, I don't have a tool to measure um, the amount of material to take off. So it's basically done by eye. So basically I just created um, a chamfered area here in the amount that I felt was proper um, and then as I did each subsequent chamber I just tried to make that chamfered area match up with um, the previous one and so as you can see um, you know without breaking out some really fine instrument they appear to be um, the same 
So basically cut the first one to the depth you want and then as you go just try to make sure they all match up. Alright, so let's get uh, this gun out of the way. So basically what we're going to do, make sure everything is clean. Um, definitely don't want any metal shavings or any other foreign material down here. So, you know, run a patch through, make sure it's clean. Uh, make sure the tool is clean. And um, I'm going to apply some oil onto this guide because this is going to go into the chamber. And then apply some oil on the cutting surfaces. Doesn't have to be a lot, but definitely do not want it to be dry. And then I, I hold it in my hand, obviously. I'm not using a vise to hold this in. I, and as, as I've done this on that previous gun and these four, you really get a good feel for how much pressure you're putting. So basically you want to insert this um, into there. You do not want to rotate it to the left. or basically loosening counterclockwise. You do not want to rotate it this way. It's meant to be done this way. So basically you're not pushing down really hard and cranking on it like this. You're basically using finger pressure here in the middle and rotate it and push down slightly and you'll feel it grabbing. You don't want to push down really hard and initially as it starts to take off material it's a little bit tough so there we go there's a couple of sharp edges there um, between the extractor and the chamber and then once it starts going just basically apply some steady light pressure and pull it out and you'll be able to see the edge that's created so not much so I'm going to put it back in again and I'm just going to keep doing this and you can feel the um, cutting edges bite into the metal you can hear it too possibly Okay, still got a ways to go now. You want to monitor the tool to make sure there are not a whole bunch of metal pieces um, accumulating. You want to reapply some oil to the cutting surfaces and um, go again. And again, you're not using a whole lot of pressure here. And you can feel and hear the tool removing material. Alright, well, I'm going to have to use a little bit more pressure because not a whole lot's coming off. Okay, we're getting there. Now, as you can see, I'm starting to get a bunch of uh, little metal pieces all over that guide. So, use the patch here and uh, clean that off. Now, you don't ever want to get a dry feeling while you're doing this. As you're rotating it, you'll feel it taking the material off. You don't ever want it to feel dry, so just keep putting some oil on it. Okay, we're getting there. It's, it's pretty close now. Basically you want to keep checking your work because um, being that you're, you're only going a little bit at a time you want to make sure you don't take off too much material because 
obviously you can't put it back on. If you go deeper than you want to, then you're going to have to go back and um, do the other cylinders to match. Okay, we're ready to go with the clean tool. I'm going to move the shell over. Now this is the last chamber. So initially, again, it's going to be rough when you first start. And you remember, do not turn the tool to the left. Only turn it to the right. can hear that grinding sound basically basically the um, this gap here between the extract extractor and the cylinder is not even so a lot of what you feel initially is going to be the tool between those cracks again. This is why you want to have a bunch of patches handy is because uh, a lot of these metal bits um, come really fast. Okay, I can feel it smoothing out already. Okay, we're only about halfway. So I'm going to use a little bit more pressure. Okay, I can f definitely, it's smoothing out a lot right now. If this camera is capturing any of the sound, you might be able to hear that it's not grinding anymore. Okay, we're probably going to do the last bit of cutting here. Okay, that's extremely close to where I want it. Okay, that's right where I want it. So, clean up the tool again. Okay, there's a lot of metal in those uh, relief areas, so I'm going to remove the guide and clean all that out before I polish it up. Alright, I'm not going to get this spotless, you know, if there's a couple of flakes of metal deep in these grooves, um, that's not going to make any difference at all in this uh, final step, but basically it's pretty clean. So uh, I'll show you what I do here at the end. Again, um, set screw just snug. Okay, so um, oil it up, 
some oil on the guide. And just like before, uh, spin this around. I'm going to feel for any high spots. It's just grabbing slightly, but it's pretty darn smooth. So basically all this is doing is uh, removing any slight high spots and polishing that chamfer. Okay, doing this super smooth. Now if you wanted to, which I'm going to do, is um, go back and just make sure that each one is smooth. And it is. That one is anyway. If you wanted to put some oil on the tool between uh, chambers here, you know, it definitely wouldn't hurt anything. But since you're not move, removing material, I don't think it's critical to do that. And again, this is just how I do it. For, um, it's not to, meant to be advice of any kind. Okay, I think this is the last one. And then we'll take a close look at it. Okay, yep, they're all super smooth. So, we're all done. Go ahead and, and we'll get a t-shirt and wipe this down. Now you want to make sure you do a thorough cleaning when you're done. I might require some disassembly, um, you know, of the cylinder. If you think you got any metal shavings anywhere in there, you want to make sure you do a really good job at getting them out. All right. Well, let's take a close look. Okay, just rotate this around slowly. Might get an idea as to how deep uh, you went with the chamfering, and you know if uh, there's one that's you know not as deep or way deeper than the others, you might want to go back and. correct things. But basically that's it. Uh, maybe catch it from a different angle here. Uh, you know it's hard to get the lighting correct in these videos. Oh there, that's not too bad. So basically you know that really shiny surface you see, the rings around the uh, chamber openings is the work that you did. Right, so now when you're going for a, you know, a reload with the speed loaders, um, basically with that widening of the uh, chamber mouths, the speed loader is going to, you know, the rounds will find their way in easier. They're not going to grab on any sharp edges because there aren't any sharp edges left. Alright everyone, um, I hope this video uh, you know, helped someone out. You know, Anyone who's considering doing this kind of work yourself um, it is not difficult and um, I did not ruin this. Um, just as long as you you know follow the instructions that came with the tool and um, take your time 
make sure the tool is clean and lubricated. I think you'll be happy with the work that you might be able to do yourself instead of sending it off and paying a lot of money for someone else to do it. And of course you always get a lot of satisfaction when you um, you know take on a, any kind of job really, not just with guns. Do it yourself, do a good job, save some money, and um, have some experience to pass on to others. All right.